the Pickwick Papers were first published in monthly installments beginning in April 1836. Illustrated by the famous artists, Seymour and Fizz, they were an overnight sensation. Not because of the fine illustrations, but because of the genius of a virtually unknown young writer, Charles Dickens, who was then 24 years old. With each monthly installment, Dickens created a host of delightful characters, the Pickwickians and their friends. The Pickwickians travel about England observing events and customs, as Mr. Pickwick put it, for the advancement of knowledge and the diffusion of learning. Many and curious were their adventures, but none more heartwarming than their Christmas holiday spent at Manor Farm, Dingley Dell, County of Kent. Yes, <laughs> it's Mr. Pickwick. Mr. Pickwick, Mr. come in, come in. Good day, Mr. Pickwick. Well, 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 How do you do, sir? How nice to see you again. <laughs> a little late, I fear. Oh, well, it's very cold. As brisk as bees did the four Pickwickians assemble on the morning of the 24th day of December. Somewhat tardy, but in his customary good humor, was Mr. Samuel Pickwick himself, the amorous Mr. Tracy Tupman, the poetic Mr. Augustus Snodgrass, and the sportive Mr. Nathaniel Winkle. <laughs> ah, Mr. Pickwick's drink. Yes, sir. Mr. Pickwick. Oh, thank you. This thank is yours, Winkle. Thank you. Gentlemen, I give you Christmas. Christmas in all his bluff and hearty honesty. Christmas. To Christmas. Father Christmas. Christmas. Gay and merry is the time, and right gay and merry are at least four of the numerous hearts that are gladdened by his coming. Here, here, Mr. Pickwick. Here, here. And numerous indeed are the hearts, to which Christmas brings a brief season of happiness and enjoyment. Numerous indeed. Here, 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 here. Right, sir. How many families? whose members have been dispersed and scattered far and wide in the restless struggle of life are then reunited. Happy, happy Christmas that can win us back to the delusions of our childish days, that can recall to the old man the pleasures of his youth, that can transport the sailor and the traveler thousands of miles away back to his own fireside and his quiet home. Now then, gentlemen, the Muggleton coach is about to depart, if you please. Oh, my coat! Have you seen my part? Yes, yes, my hat. Oh, I do hope it isn't too cold on us. Why? Hey, sorry, Mary. Yeah, we go. Wait until that is washing down. Have you got everything, sir? Yes, I think. Oh! Hi, Mary. Goodbye. Bye-bye, sir. Come along, Mr. Bickford, sir. I'll help you. I'll help you get searched. Right, sir. Now, put on the Mr. Bickford. Right, there you go, sir. Come along. Oh, I'm very happy to meet you. Mr. Bickford. Thank you very much, sir. Very kind you go. There's the waiter. All right, sir? Right, I'm glad we had that rum punch before we came out. Let me help you, Grandpa. Thank you, Grandpa. Up you go. Up there now. Is that all right? Good. We're all right now. Very much all ready, coachman? Yes, all we're all here. here. We're all here. Come on, then.
So, at three o'clock that afternoon, the Pickwickians arrived, high and dry, safe and sound, hale and hearty, at the Blue Lion Inn, Muggleton. Thank you, Sam, thank you. Uh, now then, uh, see to the luggage. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why, it's none other than Mr. Wardle's favorite servant. Uh, did he send you to meet us? Yes, Mr. Blackwell. Merry Christmas to you. And a Merry Christmas to you, my young friend. Uh, you look rosy enough. I've been asleep, right in front of the taproom fire. Master sent the shay cart to carry your luggage up to the house. He'd have sent some saddle horses, but he thought you'd rather walk being a cold day. Uh, yes, yes, we would rather walk. <laughs> Good for the circulation. <laughs> Here, uh, Sam. Yes, sir. Uh, help uh, Mr. Wardle's servant to put the luggage into the cart and then ride with him. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we shall walk on. Come, gentlemen. Forward to Dingley Dell. So, I'm to help you put the luggage in this here cart. That's right. You're a nice specimen of a prize boy, you are. Thank you. You ain't got nothing on your mind as makes you fret yourself, have you? Not as I knows on. Hmm. I should rather have thought to look at you that you was laboring under an unrequited attachment for some young woman. No. Hmm. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Do you ever drink anything? I like eating better. Ah, I should have supposed that. But what I mean is, should you like a drop of something as it'd warm you? Mm, but then, I suppose you never was cold, was you? Sometimes. And I likes a little something, when it's good. Oh, you do, do you? Come this way, then. Meanwhile, Mr. Pickwick and his friends proceeded cheerfully on. The paths were hard, there was snow on the ground. The air had a fine, dry, bracing coldness. But if they were social and happy outside the house, what was the warmth and cordiality of their reception when they reached the farm? Oh, 
I'm quite sure we shall. Christmas is always our favorite season here in Dingley. Oh, I know, I know. Yes. Now, come and see my mother. She's eagerly awaiting you, as you know. Now, that indeed will be a great pleasure. Sometimes mother is something less than pleasant, but uh, come along. Now, tell me, did Joe fetch your luggage? Oh, yes, yes, he's been most helpful. And he's bringing my servant, Sam, back with him in the shake cart. A reliable boy is both. Now, we'll surprise Mother. Oh, yes. yes. Mother? Look who's here. Mr. Pickwick. You recollect him? Never mind. Don't trouble Mr. Pickwick about an old critter like me. Nobody cares about me now. It's very natural that they shouldn't. Oh, uh, come, come, Mum. I can't let you cut an old friend like this the day before Christmas. Uh, I have come down here expressly to have a long talk with you. And... Uh, We'll show those boys and girls how to dance a minuet before they're eight and forty hours older. Ah! Huh? I can't hear him. Nonsense, Mother. Now, come, come, don't be cross, there's a good soul. Ah, uh, Mr. Pickwick, young people were very different when I was a girl. No doubt of that, Ma'am. No doubt of that. <laughs> and so, whether the old lady was touched by Mr. Pickwick's affectionate good nature, or whatever was the cause, she was fairly melted, and all her little ill humor evaporated. happy party they were that Christmas Eve. The carpet was up, the candles burned bright, the fire blazed and crackled on the hearth. And for the first time within the memory of his oldest friends, Mr. Pickwick's appearance was most remarkable. Well, Pickwick, enjoying yourself? A delightful evening, a delightful. You mean to dance, I take it? Of course I do. Don't you see? I am dressed for the purpose. You in silk stockings? And why not, sir? Why not? I suppose there's no reason why you shouldn't wear them, sir. I imagine not, sir. I imagine not. You see, nothing extraordinary in the stockings. As stockings, I trust, sir? Certainly not, sir. Certainly not. We are all uh, ready for the dancing, I believe. We are. Gentlemen, choose your partners. <laughs> Are we all ready? Yes, we are, sir. Then begin at once. Now. Stop, stop. What's the matter? What's happened? Winkle's missing. Hello, Arabella. Yes, where are you? Winkle, where are you? Winkle. Arabella. Winkle. I say Winkle. Uh, yes, here we are. What an extraordinary thing it is that you couldn't have been in your place before. <laughs> Not at all uh, extraordinary. Well, I don't know that it was so extraordinary either. After all. <laughs>
with mistletoe. Can I help you, sir? Thank you, my boy. You're younger than I am. <laughs> oh, what fun. This is the real spirit of Christmas, isn't yes, it? Yes, now, see that he's high oh, enough yeah. to serve his I think purpose. so. I think I so, sir. Ah, oh. yes. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bigwig, first in the field, eh? Ma'am, it is an honor to salute so charming a lady under the mystic branch. <laughs> Mr. Pickwick. <laughs> Tuffman, Winkle, Snodgrass, come along. <laughs> now then, ladies, now don't be quiet. Come along, submit with good grace. <laughs> Faces were in a glow and curls in a tangle. And they all sat down by the huge fire of blazing logs to a very substantial supper. Here we are, Mr. Pickwick. Oh, thank you. This is indeed comfort. Our invariable custom at Christmas time. Everybody sits down with us on Christmas Eve, as you see now, servants and all. And here we wait till the clock strikes twelve to usher Christmas in. Winkle, me boy, rake up the fire. <laughs> up flew the bright sparks in myriads as the logs were stirred. The deep red blaze sent forth a rich glow and cast its cheerful tint on every face. Ladies and gentlemen, let's drink to Christmas. To Christmas. To Christmas. To Christmas. To Christmas. 